What's going on guys? It's Professor Gnome and we're taking a look at Iron Hands EX today. There's a lot of different ways that you can play this card. I've seen a lot of lists where you just run four copies of Iron Thorns. I've seen a couple different uh, like variations of this deck. But for me, I feel like the best way to play it is within the future box, already established kind of system. And so really what we're looking at is its ability where as long as this card is in the active spot, any Pokemon with a rule box, both yours and your opponents, have no abilities. So it shuts everything off and completely ability locks your opponent. The way that we're going to be utilizing this is we can use its Volt Cyclone attack as well. But really we're going to be using it alongside the rest of our future engine. So we can go Maridon on like turn one. If we go second, power up our Iron Thorns, switch it right into the active and then kind of take control of the game. All the energies that we're going to be attacking with, since every time we use Volt Cyclone it moves an energy to one of your bench Pokemon, we can move all those energies over and attach them to our Iron Hands EX, powering that up so we can help close out games and things like that. The easiest way to do this is that we're going to really want to be able to control what is in our opponent's active. So we run things like Prime Catcher to make sure that we're always picking our targets, we run two boss. And on top of that, I've also started running Pokemon Catcher. Obviously, it's a coin flip, so it's not super consistent, but it hits more often than not, which I know is a 50-50 chance. You can't really say that, but it feels like it does. So we'll end up being able to kind of select whatever we want. We run the Techno Radar to make sure that we're always able to find our pieces. And then we run a, a, a Electric Generator. I don't know why that was so hard for me to say. But we run Electric Generator in order to make sure that we're always powering up our Iron Thorns and our Iron Hands, making sure they're always ready, and then also running the Heavy Baton, keeping all those energies in play so we don't lose them. And yeah, we also, we do run one uh, Ghost, en or not Ghost, what? Psychic Energy. In order to just, sometimes it's really nice to have Iron Crown EX, just the ability to snipe out 50 damage can come up sometimes it's not always the most important but it does come up and so i like the option of having it if i ever need it so yeah that's the list guys definitely let me know what you think of the list definitely let me know any changes that you would make uh there's a lot of different variations of this deck so i'm very curious to see how everyone decides to play it so yeah definitely let me know don't forget to like comment subscribe all that kind of stuff be sure to join our community discord in the description down below as well as anyone looking for the deck list it's always in the description of all my videos feel free to go down copy it test it out make edits whatever you want to do with it um but yeah so be sure to join that and then the last announcement is the community discord tournament will be our first one it'll be held on june 1st at 6 30 p.m est so be sure to join that the access code is gnome g-n-o-m-e that'll also be down in the description so feel free to join we would love to have you in the tournament and yeah that's all the announcements so be sure to let me know what you want to see next on the channel and what decks you want to see featured and what cards you want to see featured next and i will make sure to add them into the schedule so i will see you guys all in game one in a moment peace all right we're into game number one our opponent is going to be going first we open a pretty good hand actually all things considered since when you're going first it's actually really nice to be able, or when you're placing down your like opening cards rather not going first it's pretty nice to be able to open iron thorns just because in most matchups your opponent's going to want to play something like a squawk billy or a Radiant Greninja or something in order to utilize its ability and so when we have Iron Thorns in the active it stops them from being able to do that and we can always just throw a booster energy capsule on it like we plan to do and just remove it from the board so it all works out for us in the end pretty well what we'll also be able to do here is that we can go Arvin grab ourselves a Techno Radar get ourselves a Maridon attack into the uh, what is this thing called? Minchino? And then we can repower up our Iron Thorns, bring it back into the active. From there, if we power up something like Iron Hands or whatever, it's pretty easy. This matchup's actually kind of nice for us because of how much we're able to do things like boss up the either the Archaeops or the Lugias. We hit for weakness, so we're able to take multiple prize cards pretty easily. So it's not too bad for us. We'll see if they get the coin flip. They do. We'll see if we get the coin flip on our turn. Uh, 
Oh, that's kind of fun. Their name is Machu Picchu. Like the that's that's pretty funny. So we'll see what they choose here. It makes sense for them to go for like Archaeops or something. They already have one in the discard. They go for a second Mancino. It's actually not a bad idea considering the fact that it's pretty guaranteed this one would get uh, knocked out. So they want to make sure that they can preserve that. We do get a second Techno Radar. So that's pretty nice for us. We'll go ahead and discard one energy. We can go Crown here and Maridon just kind of guarantee that initial setup. We can go Maridon. And then we'll coin flip here, see what else we're able to find. See if we get something. We do. So we can grab ourselves an extra Iron Crown here. We can go ahead and Future Booster. We can retreat. Place Maridon right into the active. Place the energy down. Then what we can do is Arvin from here grab ourselves another techno radar and future booster capsule it looks like we don't have any heavy batons so that's marginally annoying but not the biggest deal in the world we can actually discard the iron thorns for now don't really need a second one and we can go hands and crown we can place down the hands place down the crown and then we don't need to play the Ancient Booster Capsule on to Maridon just yet. We can hold on to it since it won't make too much of a difference. And then from here, we can just start powering up our Iron Thorns. Or our Iron Hands, rather. We do get one of the Heavy Batons, so that's pretty nice. So if we can get a second attack off with Maridon, that's great if we can't then it's no big deal since what we can probably do is nice if we're lucky enough if so like let's say our riding gets knocked out here which seems relatively likely if we hit the coin flip, fantastic. We can just go right into. We can just go right into a new Maridon, power that up, and go from there. So there's the Lugia V Star. Another Mancino. Capturing Aroma. Let's hope they hit Tails here. They do get another Heads. All their coin flips are going really well. So they are going to go Chinchino. So our Maridon is going to get knocked out here. Not the biggest deal in the world. We'll see if we hit our if we hit the heads then we're in a great spot. If we don't then it is what it is. Playing pretty conservative on the energy. Makes sense. They don't need that many in order to knock us out anyway. We can go Iron Thorns into the active. We'll see if we get the coin flip here. Hopefully we do. We do. I think all coin flips have been heads this game. That's pretty nice. Oh, not that. We can go right on here. And for now, just kind of do like a single prize trade back and forth. So we can go ahead and attach here. We can attach the heavy baton. We'll go energy booster capsule onto Maridon. And then we'll actually remove that just to be a little bit annoying. We can pick ourselves something up if we really want. We have the option to Pokemon Catcher. At least attempt to. 
but knocking out the Minchino here is probably fine and just holding on to the Pokemon Catcher for next turn. We can go Peak Acceleration here. Go double electric energy. We can attach one and one. They are going to be able to draw themselves two cards. Not the biggest deal in the world. But what's nice here is that we only have a couple prize cards left that we need to get. We have the option to Pokemon Catcher on our next turn, potentially. They do lead uh, Lugia V-Star, which is pretty nice for us if they just go ahead and knock out the Maridon just straight up. Then what we'll be able to do is bring in our Iron Hands, knock this out, and go from there. It does look like they're going to go Iron Hands to knock out our Maridon. So we would really love for this Pokemon Catcher to hit. If we don't, it's, again, not the biggest deal in the world, but definitely would be very ideal. But what we'll end up doing is that even if this doesn't KO, we'll be able to arm press it down and get the knockout that way. So we'll lead Iron Thorn since we can always just retreat anyway. We can attach the energy manually. Uh, actually, let's do this first. So we can discard. Grab ourselves a new Thorns and or Crown rather. And Iron Hands. What we can do is, let's see if we get our Pokemon Catcher first. Because if we can get the Pokemon Catcher off, then that's, okay, that's huge. So we can pull Lugia back up. Then what we can do is all we need, we don't need the Iron Crown's damage at that point. So we can go hands here. We can Electric Generator. We don't hit anything. Not the biggest deal in the world. Kind of wish we did, but, you know, no such luck. We can go ahead and Town Store. Just pull a couple cards out of our deck. We can go Future Booster. Place that down. And then what we can do here is... It's probably more optimal to just research for 7... Because all we'll need is one boss after this. And cool. So we found pretty much everything we wanted. What we can do now is we can retreat. Bring in our hands. Amp you very much. Hit for weakness. Take three prize cards. So one, two, three. Cool. We have generator. Uh, it, it, not that we're going to need it. But in this situation, since we already have boss, we have prime catcher, everything like that. And Iono here would be damaging. So that's really the main thing that we're on the lookout for that we want to be able to avoid. Not sure why they played the double turbo there. Don't really feel like that was needed. Uh, the Iono is definitely rough. Hopefully, all we need to do is get into an Arvin. That'll also work out for us. We do get a Pokegear, which is pretty lucky for us, if we're honest. There's the Luminion V. The question is, what do we want to place the energy onto? Though this isn't going to get, I mean, this isn't going to get knocked out this turn. 
because they placed the double turbo on it. But they will be able to retreat it and go Iron Hands and take the last three prizes. So if we don't find what we're looking for here, we're probably going to end up actually having to retreat this out to go into... Yeah, to go into our uh, our Iron Hands and then retreat, bring Thorns back in. Okay, I mean, we're still going to live. Can we just arm press this down now, though? Yeah. I'm very confused by their final plays. Oh, I have a heavy baton on. Alright. Oh, okay, cool. We got the boss anyway. So, works out for us. That could have been a little bit bad. But, we'll take it. Definitely. Little, little weird there. <laughs> definitely an odd i kind of forgot i uh for a second that i had the heavy baton not the not like it was going to be like the the most dramatic outcome in the world but definitely could have sucked there a little bit so we, we lucked out a little bit at the end so we'll take what we can get but yeah we, our play was not optimal there by the end but hey it is what it is game one we roll through and we'll take what we can get and i will see you guys in game two in a moment peace all right, we're into game number two. Our opponent's going to be going first. We do have the Arvin, so that's nice, since we're going to be able to get our Iron Hands out of the active. We don't really want it there. We do see Judge. Okay, so they're playing Iron Thorns as well, but they're playing the control version, which mulligans a lot because they they only have four basics in their like in their deck. So this is, I had to burp there a little bit. This isn't actually that bad for us. Since even if they're like knocking energies off us, it's not really that big a deal. Because one, we don't really rely on any important abilities that we like desperately need. And also we're future, so it doesn't even matter. So we can go Maridon Crown here. We don't really... We'll go Arvin. To grab ourselves the Ancient Booster Capture. And... Oh, no, not Pokemon Catcher. We can actually just go Electric Generator here. So... We'll place this onto the hands. Retreat. Go Maridon. Thank you, go Maridon, thank you. We can go energy onto the Maridon. We'll discard one for Techno Radar. Get ourselves double crown. Yeah. Cause how much are we doing? 160, 180, 200. 220 so we'll be short all right so there we go so now we can arm press and knock out any iron thorns that we want we'll be ahead on energy so even if for whatever reason they are able to even if they go like double crushing hammer here we'll pretty much be fine because all we need is one energy to arm press and we also have prime catcher so we'll be fine here so there's the tails so they also need to find their other iron thorns here because we do knock them out on the next turn no matter what They could go... Oh, they went Energy Lotto. 
yeah i man i i've talked i talked about it in the intro i really don't like that build the all like the just four copies of iron thorns i've even some seen some that are like four copies of iron thorns one copy ditto or like two copy ditto i i really don't like it i i don't think it's that strong it is where like just put it into iron just put it into future box where like future box is already a good deck and then you add iron thorns and it just gets better i i don't i don't know i i'm kind of a hater on just the the thorns full control build but maybe maybe i just don't know it well enough and so i just don't i don't give it the the credit it deserves maybe it is possible but that, that's game two we'll, we'll probably do four games because that one obviously was very very short and i will see you guys in game three peace all right, we're into game number three. Our opponent's going to be going first because we won the coin flip. We are going to mulligan this hand away, though it would have been really nice to be able to keep it. Our opponent mulligans as well, so that's kind of nice for us. This is fine. What is our opponent playing? Oh, wait, this is us. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're up against Dracopult. That's not too bad for us, actually. It just means that Thorns doesn't really come up as much in this matchup. But with double techno radar, we'll we'll be able to knock out the Dreepy right away, which is pretty nice because we just get to put on early pressure. This is also the other reason why I like this variant of the the build more, or like this variant more, is because of the early pressure that you get to put on with Maridon, it helps you not only kind of speed up, but also just do more. In this matchup in particular, it's gonna be better that we have Iron Hands powered up just because we want to be able to pull up like the Zatus or the Rotoms and things like that. They are going to be able to switch, so we won't knock out the Dreepy on this turn. Not that big a deal, though. Oh, we have the boss. That's pretty nice. So we probably will just end up knocking out the Dreepy anyway, unless we get into like a supporter we really, really want. But we can go Crown here, and we can go Hands. We can go hands, crown, we'll attach, and then we'll techno radar again. Lost vacuum. Get ourselves one more crown. And then we'll grab ourselves one more hands. I like Iron Thorns, but really in this matchup it doesn't matter because the only thing that we'd ever be shutting off like is Rotom. And that's just not really good enough. So we'll go one more hands, and then we'll poke a gear here. We do find an Iono, that's going to be great for next turn. So we can hold on to that. What we can do now is boss, pull the Dreepy back up. We do just enough damage. Knock that out, grab ourselves double energy. Start powering up one of the thorn, uh, the hands rather. Man, I've talked about this in a, in a past video, but I really hate that all the future Pokemon are just called Iron something. Because not only is it really, uh, like, not creative at all, and it's pretty annoying, but more so than that, it's just lame. Like, I, I, I talked about it in the past before, so I don't want to do the whole spiel again, but I can't figure out if it's supposed to just be a play on the fact that... Okay, so we'll go future booster capsule here, and then what we can actually do, we'll Iono for practically an entirely new hand. That's pretty sweet. We'll generator here. We get two hits, so we're going to close out the game. Bop. Bop. We can retreat, and we'll just arm press and close out the game. So our opponent kind of didn't get too much going there, but us being able to boss up the Dreepy, even if, let's say, let's say hypothetically that instead of just having nothing there, like going Rotom and instant charging, they played down like double Dreepy and went evolution to like a Zatu, it wouldn't even have made that much of a difference because we, like, let's say that we coin flip the, uh, the Pokemon Catcher, 
then we would have just pulled it up, iron hands, knocked it back out. So I think that just getting the boss there would have closed out the game for us anyway, which we already had in that like beginning sequence, like being able to knock out that first Dreepy. Obviously, we don't know how hard our opponent bricked, probably at least decently. We, they would have liked to have gotten more off that opening turn, but it is what it is. So we'll do, eh, maybe we'll do five games because two of those were really, really short. So we'll go into game number four and see how that one treats us. And I will see you guys there. Peace. All right, we're into game number four. And our opponent's going to be going first. We open not incredibly ideally, but not that bad. Eh? Like, overall, we have the Arden. We have a free retreater in the active. So that's pretty much all we ever really need. We do have an energy in hand. Tanker Tongue. Well, that's interesting. I don't think I've ever really played against this card. I know it got some some hype when the what is that card called? The Dunsparce came out. When when the Dunsparce came out, I know that Tinkatone kind of got some some love because of its better standing. But oh, okay, perfect. I don't personally don't think it's very good but maybe i'm wrong maybe it's super good and i just don't know so we can get double techno radar here we'll techno ra radar away one heavy baton for now we can grab ourselves crown and the maridon since that's kind of the most important pieces for us at the moment and then we can techno radar again we can get rid of Honestly, we can get rid of the electric generator. I don't think we're re like it's really going to be that needed. I don't think Thorns comes up this matchup, but I could be real. I could be wrong. The biggest thing I will say with this deck is that when Thorns comes up, it's super strong, but when it doesn't, it's kind of not relevant at all. So we'll restart here for one more card. We get an Iono, that's actually nice because they're going to want to like buff up their hand and we can shut that down. And then we can go Peak Acceleration here. Go two energies. Some of the matchups for reference where it's really nice to have Iron Thorns is actually in the Raging Bolt and Ogre Pond matchup. Since what you can do, and it's kind of like niche, is that once you kind of get set up, you can go Thorns... And then four Iron Crown and another Thorns. And then you, once you have the energy set up on them, which you can do kind of quickly with the Electric Generators, you just retreat them back and forth, passing the one energy each time you attack to the other one. All right, cool. Quick, quick little game. It's just how consistently we're able to do that. We'll do we'll do another one because because all these games are going so quickly. I'm like not getting anything out of them. So we'll go one more game and we'll see what happens. Peace. All right, we're into the next game, and our opponent's going to be going first. We do open Thorns, which, like I said, is actually pretty good for us. Opening Thorns is always pretty ideal. We are up against Lugia again. So, like before, it would be ideal. We'll be able to power up a Maridon, though keeping Iron Thorns in the active will be kind of nice since we can potentially shut off Lugia. And we do have Generator and Techno Radar available to us. So what we might want to do is create an Iron Thorns generate, like, generator to it and try to t like pull it out. We'll see what the coin flips are like this game. Heads again so far. Because the more I play it, I feel like it actually is more optimal to keep Iron Thorns in the active. So that way we're shutting off Lugia and they can't even get the Archaeops in the first place. I feel like that's actually the more optimal way to go about it. So there's a crown. We'll place that down. We can go ahead and coin flip here. We get a Tails. Not that big a deal, though. We have Techno Radar. Grab ourselves a second 
thorns and a crown. So that way that's prepared. Then what we can do here is we'll generator. We get one hit. Need a second hit here. And then what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna Arvin here for another generator. And Prime Catcher. Or sorry, not Prime Catcher. Uh booster energy capsule. So then what I can do is if I hit here. Which my odds are pretty good, right? Cool, cool. So what I can do is I can retreat here. Bring in Iron Thorns. Attack, knocking out the Mancino. And then I can move one energy onto the Iron Thorns. So that way that's getting powered up as well. And I'm still shutting off abilities. I get the Pokemon Catcher. That's pretty hype. That means that I can attempt to target out the Lugia. We are strong enough that we can one-shot anything we want with the Iron Crowns on the bench. So they're going to have to... They hit heads again. The only thing that we have to now worry about is them being able to boss up the Iron Crowns in order to utilize uh, Lugia. There's an Ultra Ball. This will get them their Lugia V-Star. Which means their top card is... The, the other card in their hand can't be boss. There's no shot. And if it's not, then we just win the game. Alright, it's Iono. That's also fine. Hey, cool. We, kept, we keep the Pokemon Catcher. There's the Chinchino. They don't play Prime. They they don't play Prime Catcher, so we don't have to worry about that because Prime Catcher is used, or Prime Catcher isn't used in this deck. They will set themselves up some basics. See what they decide to go for. They go for a hands of their own. We can place hands down just to kind of power one up in the background because there's no reason not to. We'll coin flip here. Not Again, we, we hit tails, so not super optimal. We'll Pokemon Catcher. So that was our tails, right? So that way we get heads here. Let's go. Play in the system. Give me the Lugia. Then what we'll do is we'll Lost Vacuum here. We'll get rid of the hands to remove... Yep, and they're going to FF. So that's why, po man, that's why Pokemon Catcher is so good. It's like, does it hit every time? No, but 60% of the time, it hits 100% of the time. And so when it does, it just makes matchups so much easier for you, especially in a thing where you have utilizations like Iron Thorns and Iron Hands. Being able to pull them up, being able to pick what's in the active pretty much at all times between Prime Catcher, Boss, Pokemon Catcher, all those kind of things... We're, we're kind of the person who always gets to dictate how the game is being played, and it makes it super, super strong. So that's going to be the last game, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I know the games were a little bit weird because we just got a lot of a lot of our opponent conceding instantly. But honestly, that's just how this deck is. If you get off to an early lead, your opponent concedes like 90% of the time. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next video. Be sure to join the, the community Discord. Uh, be sure to join the upcoming community tournament on June 1st and definitely be be sure to let me know what else you want to see on the channel in the future. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.